At ABC Action News, following the money from Wall Street to Washington as the stock market flirted with the 23,000 mark today, new data out tonight revealing which members of Congress have invested in the very same companies that lobby for their power and contribute to their political campaigns. As the stock market heats up, Congress is getting richer. According to brand new data from the Centers for Responsive Politics, while 1% of Americans are millionaires, in Congress, up to half the members are in the seven-digit stratosphere, and more than 70% of senators are millionaires. All this at a time when these same millionaire elected leaders are considering changes to your taxes and your health care. So who's the richest congressman in our area of Florida? Representative Vern Buchanan, worth an estimated $82 million in 2012. Records show that he's owned investments in major companies, including Pepsi, Microsoft, and United Technologies. And all of these companies have contributed thousands of dollars to Buchanan's campaigns over the years, and all of them actively lobby Congress. Then there's Kathy Castor. Public records show that she's had investments in Verizon, GE, and AT&T. All the while, those same three companies have collectively contributed tens of thousands of dollars during her political career. And all three lobby Congress. We also looked into Senator Marco Rubio. Documents show he once owned stock in Coca-Cola. He since sold it, but Coca-Cola did contribute $5,000 to his campaign in 2014. And Senator Bill Nelson held hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stock in an insurance company called Brown & Brown. He sold it in 2009, but not before that same insurance company contributed tens of thousands of dollars to Senator Nelson's campaigns in 2006 and 2012. Two Republicans, two Democrats, and the House Ethics Committee investigated Representative Buchanan on allegations that car dealerships, which he partially owned in Sarasota, illegally reimbursed his employees for giving money to his political campaign. Well, after four years of looking into those allegations, the committee found that there was insufficient evidence.